it's always a party at Patchworks. Let's get this party started. Woot, woot. Hi, everyone. This is Julie from Patchworks, and I am so excited to be with you tonight on this Thursday night here in March. And we're live. Very, very exciting. Very, very exciting. So tonight, we are going to be talking about um i we just want to get our text away from here that's you frank so, <laughs> so you know it's always a party here right so anyhow so why don't you bring it over here frank so we just have some minor technical difficulties but we're here live and this is super exciting so we're just going to wait for you all to come on in and join us all right, so what we're just going to do is we're going to bring us over here again and then come down here. And that went away. And then. Okay, make it go away. There you go. So let's start again. Welcome. We have a really fun program planned for you tonight. We have. Uh, we're going to be talking about our blocks of the month. So we have Toes in the Sand. We're going to be talking about um, our block Bonanza. We've been playing with that. We're going to talk about some precision piecing, half square triangles. And then we're going to take a sneak peek at some new boutiques that just arrived in the store. <gasps> Ooh, pretty, pretty, pretty. So let's get started and talk about the Toes in the Sand. So Toes in the Sand is a block of the month written by Julie Herman. And we are going to be hosting the official quilt here in June, which is really, really exciting. We have some subscriptions available where you receive the fabric every month. And then in the last months, you would get all of the setting as well to make your throw twin size here. The cool thing about this pattern, if you hadn't seen it before, is that in this 10th anniversary, Julie resized it to have the queen size as well. And I don't have quite the, um, oh, page 36 here, page 36. So you can see here that you can also make one that is 97 by 96 rather than just the 64 by 84. Really, really exciting. We are going to be doing block three here, and Tammy is sharing the link for Julie Herman's Facebook group where she talks about all of her different quilt alongs, including her Toes in the Sand. She's been doing videos every single month about the different blocks, and this month we have four fabrics. Heidi went ahead and made our blocks for us, and the cool thing about this is that both blocks are created from the same strip sets. So you have here, if you look at just the base unit, we have this and this, okay? So how do we get that? <gasps> Ooh. So what we did is Heidi prepped for us some strip sets right here. And all you do is go ahead and cut the strip sets. I'm just going to cut a couple pieces for you here so that we can take a peek at this. And using the Julie's Hex and More ruler, okay. Going to rotate the mat. So I'll have to show you a spinny map. I keep on talking about that, that we need to have the spinny mat. So we have someone who's super excited to talk to us tonight, but we are just going to continue on. And then I have, see, you never know what happens when you're live, right? Never, ever know. 
Maybe we should talk to them and have a live on air audience. What does that sound like? Huh. So, and you would continue cutting all the way along. Okay. So you can see here that each of the strip sets produces both of the blocks. And the unique thing that we're doing here with this block is we are putting together all of one kind or all of another kind into the cool block. So let's take a peek at those again. Here and here. Super, super cool, super easy. I love how Julie's designs go together really well. And this particular block would also be well suited for making a whole quilt with just these two blocks. Can you see how that might be fun? Just alternating them, you could play with the different, um, different positionings of how they could go together and it would just be super cool. But with just these four fabrics, you can get two unique blocks. Super fun. Now with on Julie's Facebook group, if you follow along, she is having so much fun with all sorts of different things. We have in stock by popular demand, her night sky pattern. We have um, this available as well as she's gonna be starting a quilt along coming up in a little bit for the book, Quilts for Baby and Beyond, which is really awesome. And this has a whole 12 different quilts that have all sorts of great shapes and are a little bit less um, intense than this block of the month with all of the tiny pieces. All of her patterns and books do use her fantastic tools. We have the Super Sidekick and Hex and More in stock here. There is a Sidekick that is a smaller version of the ruler. If you would like one of those, please let us know because we'd be more than happy to order it for you. And then there also is a teeny tiny version of the Hex and More ruler, and I'm just digging into my little pouch here. The little tiny mini Hex and More, which is a cute little keychain or tool, which you could use for making things like, um, not these two, but little smaller pieces. So the Nova and Rock Candy both use the regular Sidekick, or you could use the Super Sidekick. It's just the smaller piece of acrylic to go with the smaller piece of fabric works really, really well. If you are a participating subscriber, your packs of fabric are available now, and they are always available after the first Thursday of the month. If you wanted to store everything, we do have some really nice project bags in stock. And since we are in the tool of spirit of things, we have restocked our Between the Lines, which is a really nice size bag here. I'm just gonna get my block here. So it doesn't quite fit without bending, but this still is a nice ample size project bag. And then we also have a plain project bag, a medium tula that has the great homemade tools, the medium lemur, and I think we have a small bag, but that's more for your tools and not necessarily for a project. So lots of things that can keep you organized. You could even use it for storing your specialty rulers along with your pattern. Any questions on those? Okay, so now we are going to talk about Block Bonanza. I'm going to just clear these away here and then I can pull out and show you. Uh, last month we introduced Block Bonanza and I showed you some different fabric options for working with that particular quilt all sorts of really fun things. And the thing that I love about the Block Bonanza is that it is so versatile and it is a great stash buster. Or, you know, when you work with something like this, it also can like have your 
I don't know, have your fabric make babies. Do you ever find that, that once you start working on a project that your fabric has babies? Especially if you put it in a bin and then you start cutting it up, all of a sudden you thought you started with this much fabric, but you have this much fabric. So, Flock Bonanza by Sarah J. And this is available with two different pattern covers. They're the exact same pattern. One shows a little bit more contemporary pattern cover and the original shows a little bit more traditional. We went ahead and we put our pattern in a binder with the little page protectors. And that's really great for working with it so that you can keep everything flat and organized. You don't lose track of your pages. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm working with loose pages, like things go flying everywhere. And then I don't know where my instructions are. And I said, where's page five? And then like, if I'm in the store, I say, Tammy, where's page five? And she's like, I don't know, Julie. And so we put it in a binder, said I can't lose it. And then what I'm able to do is I'm able to tuck things in. So like, if you wanna start with cutting your fabric for the four blocks that we're going to be talking about this month, you could cut all your fabric in one session and then you could sew your fabric as you're ready. So, you know, sometimes you might want to sew just one block in a session because it's a little bite-sized block or maybe you want to work on all of them at one time, but it can really help keep you organized. For this particular project, we're going to be cutting block by block uh, rather than cutting for the whole quilt. In the pattern, Sarah has sp specified and numbered all sorts of fabrics here that you can go along and cut. But literally, I've been, as I've been making these blocks, if it calls for four fabrics, I pull four fabrics from my stash. Okay, so let's just take a look because I know I'm kind of talking a lot here. Frank, let's look overhead. And you can see here the blocks that I'm making have an Americana look. I'm using some Minikin Simpson fabric here. And I started with a small stack. I think it was um, 12 pieces of the Belle Isle. And what I wanted to share with you is we have some really great fabrics. And not that you have to use only Moda fabric. You can use anything at all, things in your stash. But I just want to show you the awesome Americana fabric. So this is the Prairie Days by Bunny Hill, which just came out. This is the new Newport by Minikin Simpson. And this will be arriving any day now. And so this has the really great um, traditional navies into light blues and creams with a titch of red. This is the Belle Isle, which was the starting point for the blocks that I've been making. And then also into the Crystal Lane here, which is the blue and tan story here by Bunny Hill. It has a snowman, so you can take the snowman out if that doesn't fit into your Americana theme. But then you can see that the tan goes back to the Minikin Simpson tan, and of course things move forward and backwards really, really well. So I'm saying with confidence, if you're starting with a stack of fabric, you don't have to buy 80 billion yards at once. I mean, of course, I would love for you to buy 80 billion yards at once, but what you can do is you can start with a little stack, add to it, buy a little stack, add to it, and uh, it'll just be a lot of fun. Okay, so don't be intimidated by the numbering of the, of the fabrics here. So like here, I'm just in block one here. Do you see without the, okay, where it says, fabrics 1, 10, 21, and 24. Just pick four fabrics, okay? And then you can make it work that way. So, let's talk a bit about our basic blocks here, and then what we're going to do is we're gonna talk a little bit more about technique, okay? Sound good? So I can't give away all of the trade secrets from the pattern. You will have to purchase it if you would like to play along. We do have, uh, we had showed off block number one last month. 
I don't know if you remember that we showcased it in several different fabrics. I'm just going to recap here if you didn't see it. We had shown you the blue and yellow, which is gorgeous. We showed you an alternate blue and yellow, which is the one that we started with, but we didn't like the contrast here. So we changed up the fabrics to have the pattern show a little bit better. And then we played with a tonal red as we're going to be playing with a different color version through the year. And so yes, this is super blendy and you can't particularly see the work of the block, which is why I thought that working with the Americana fabrics could be great because they really show the contrast, they work well on camera, and we can talk through that and you can never have enough red, white, and blue quilts. And that Minikin Simpson fabric, well, it's always gorgeous. And you can add in the other great Moda designers as well. So one of the things that Sarah J has in her patterns is that she has you cutting each individual unit and sewing things together individually. So sometimes that works really, really well, and other times you might want a strip piece, but just so that you know, her instructions have you subcut every single piece. You would put together the little units of these two fabrics and then assemble the nine blocks as a nine patch, okay? So this one's pretty straightforward. This is a great test to be able to test your quarter inch, okay? So with the quarter inch, since these blocks finish six inches, but measure six and a half, it's really important to get your seam allowance right so that all of your blocks go together perfectly. The two second drill of tools that make your quarter inch work great. Schmetz, Microtex, 7010 needles. 7010. To work with your Orofil 50 weight thread. Okay, these two work together great. They create less bulk. Less bulk creates less issue so that when you're piecing this, you don't lose those threads and things measure. So what I want you to do when you're making this block, piece these two together and measure them and make sure they measure what they're supposed to, which is actually two and a half inches. So put, your, put this together and make sure you have a two and a half inch square. If it does not equal two and a half inches, do not proceed, do not pass go. If you can't figure out what the problem is, come and talk to your friends at Patchworks because we would love to help you figure out how to make sure that this equals two and a half inches. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. What block number is that? This is block number one. So it's a great, easy start. And what we're going to be doing is I'm gonna be sharing four blocks a month with you. And if you can keep up at the pace of four blocks a month, that's great. But if you need to extend that and work on a scale that's more, I don't know, one block a month, you absolutely can do that because these videos live forever and you can watch us whenever. Sound good? Okay, great. Block number two is this one, okay? So see, we're building on our skills. Block number one, we are just doing a simple straight line. And here we are taking the straight line and we are combining it into a four patch. And then we have the half square triangle. Ooh -hoo -hoo. So once again, Sarah gives us all the instructions to cut all of these squares out separately. Now this fabric that we're working with here is a print, I'm gonna pull it out of my bucket. I have my little bucket here that has all of my leftover fabrics. And this fabric, you can see here, has these great flower motifs. Oh, nope, it's not this fabric. I lied. This one here, which one is this one? Okay, so that fabric, is here. See, I have all my fabric all folded up really nice. 
Okay. So you can see that there's these little floral and flag motifs spread throughout. So if you wanted to only get the little grid for your little squares, you absolutely could fussy cut them to put them into your four patches here, okay? So you could cut them out. But if we're going to strip piece or strip cut, then you may end up with having parts of the flower in, okay? So I included the flower as it appeared. I didn't worry about fussy cutting. I just wanted to show you, you could always take something and fussy cut it, which would then work really well with Sarah's instructions where she has you cutting everything out separately. Does that make sense? Okay. Before I cut anything, and you might be able to see these really nice creases in here, I do like to pre-treat all of my fabric with starch. Now, it is a little bit of a challenge. We're out of starch right now. It's going to be probably the end of the month before we get it back in. I apologize for that. Um, but I do like to pre-treat all of my fabric before I cut it. So why do I do it? Number one, it makes it really nice and crisp. Number two, and I don't know if you can see it on this one here, but as I sprayed it, and it shrunk up just a little bit, and so I wanna make sure that that shrinking happens before it gets in my block, okay? So when I work with pre-cuts like this, I don't pre-wash my pre-cuts because, well, horrible things sometimes happen to pre-cuts when you put them in a washer. So the way to get them to shrink up before then would be to spray them, okay? So that's what I do. And then uh, it works really nice and I have nice crisp fabric. And I'll show you a little trick a little bit later about how you can use that crispness to your advantage. All right, so. If you had wanted to, you would be able to strip piece your pieces here and then subcut in order to then have your units to make your four patch. Okay, so what you could always do is you could multiply the number of units you need in order to find out how long your strips need to be. Make sense? Okay. For your alternate unit, I said we were gonna talk about half square triangles a little bit. And for our half square triangles, one of the things that I really like is that Sarah does her units a little bit oversized so that you can trim them down. On the fourth block, I'm going to show you how we trim them down, but I just wanted to share with you sizing wise, if we look at it, how much wiggle room we have with this block here. So it's really nice to be able to square it down. So if you're reading her instructions and you're terrified because she uses things like eighths in her pattern, don't be terrified, she's actually giving you a little bit of wiggle room to make your job that much easier. So that's super cool, okay? All right. So let me show you just um, the other two blocks and then we'll talk about how I go ahead and make these half square triangles. And as I was saying, for putting things in the pouch, for something like this, what you're able to do is sneak in your binder and just tuck things in the pouch that helps keep things really nice and organized, okay? All right, I'll straighten that out there. For block number three, Similarly, we just have our four patch, but we're going a little smaller, okay? So we talked about a four patch in the last block, and we had the half square triangle. So Sarah's building on your skill and technique. 
If you weren't able to get the last block to size, don't proceed on to the block three. And come and see your friends at Patchworks if you're having issue with the sizing. So here, we're using four fabrics again. You can just pick four fabrics out of your stash that will work with the block. And then you go ahead and create your four patch and half square triangle units. And you're also cutting a square. You could fussy cut the center if you wanted to have some really exciting look. And then you can see when you're assembling these four patches, you have this chain emerge. Can you see that? This would be a really interesting block repeated in a quilt. I could see that really an interesting alternating pattern would emerge there. And then, dun, dun, dun. Ah, look at this. Now from the camera, you might not be able to see that we have a pinwheel with a corner, okay? So this is not some weird shape that you are somehow expected to piece in. It is a little bit tedious as there are all these different pieces. However, it goes together really, really nice. And Sarah has included some oversizing so we can trim things off to be perfect, okay? So let me get my pieces here. So for my half square triangle that I wanna share with you, I should probably get up my cutting board because I can't cut on the white surface, can I now? No, that wouldn't work particularly well. And for this example, I'll just put this right here. For this example, I decided to use solid fabric so that we could see the lines and I used black thread here so that things would appear. See, I do learn after doing this for a while. All right, so when I'm working with half square triangles, I like to use a few different tools. So the tools that I like to use are my quick quarter ruler, and the quick quarter ruler comes in the eight and 12 inch size. I love my Soline ceramic lead pencil, and it comes with different colors. This is a ceramic lead, and it works really, really well. You could also use something like the Cluck Cluck Sew diagonal seam tape on your machine bed or on your fabrics. And those are really wonderful tools for working with your half square triangle units. I'm going to be using this large piece. I would actually use the smaller one if I were working with it for real but you can always use the large one. And what I wanted to do, I had actually stitched this so you could see it a little bit better and to save us a step. But what I do is I position this quick quarter ruler from point to point and I use my pencil and I draw my stitch lines. There are some instructions that tell you to, to mark the center line here and then stitch a quarter inch away I find that I'm more successful when I actually draw my stitch lines, okay? Another quick tip is that when you're cutting out your squares, I highly recommend that you position your fabrics as you're cutting them. So when you're cutting your strips and your fabrics, I'm just taking these two fabrics here, okay? You position your fabrics right sides together, okay, right sides together, when you cut your strips and subcut your squares for making this so that you touch it less and it's already a little sandwich ready to go when you're ready to mark these and work with it. So that's just a little pro tip there. Put your fabrics right sides together. So we have it together, we mark it, we stitch it. If I were working on this block, I would have all of my half square triangle units together 
before I sat down to the sewing machine so that I could chain piece them along the way. And then what I would do is I would cut it open and press it apart. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut it apart here and show you something that's really helpful. I'm just aligning that point to point, okay? And of course you would want to use thread that would complement and be camouflaged, but you can't see that when I do that here. And then the cool thing is, is that since we've starched our fabric, we can use uh, this little manual roller, which is really awesome. So I press my seams open, but you can press them to one side. You can press to the dark side if you like. Okay, and if you didn't want to be at uh, iron right away, you can use this little roller, which is awesome and works particularly well when you've pre-starched your fabric. It is the Roland Press by Clover and is something that we stock. So I did iron press these and this particular one I am trimming to two and five eighths. Oh my goodness, that sounds super scary. So what I'm going to do is since it's really not scary, I wanna show you some different components about this ruler and how it's not scary. And so I'm gonna have Frank come up by us and it might take a moment for him to come up here. And what we're gonna do is that I wanna show you some things a little bit more up close about this ruler and how we can, how to not be afraid of things like eighths when we cut them, okay? So this particular ruler is the, this particular ruler is the Rotary Mate Ruler by Patchworks. It was designed by Trudy Hughes of Patchworks. Back, that was our Patchworks founder. And let's see if we can get no glare here. Okay, can you come in just a little bit closer, Frank? Okay, so let's see here. So you can see that our numbers start at zero and in the center here go quarter, but we also have these dashed lines in here. So we have eighth yards marked on this ruler, which is super, super handy. Eighth inch. Eighth inch. Did I say, what did I say? Eighth yards. Eighth yard, it is not an eighth yard ruler. It is an eighth inch ruler. Thank you, Frank, for helping me. And the thing that I like about this is that we have the lines in one direction, but we don't have a grid, so we can still see things a little bit better, okay? So, you also have in this ruler, we have these 45 degree lines that can help us trim things down. So, in total, it's a 12 inch by three and a half inch ruler and we have our lines here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this up and we are trimming this to two and five eighths and this is the first time that Frank and I are doing this for you so let's see if we can make it happen. Okay, so I use this so that we hopefully would be able to see it a little bit better, okay? The two and five eighths mark is right here and I'm just gonna go on the other side of Frank here for a second because I wanna get my handy dandy tape because if you're unfamiliar with the marking, doing something like using glow line tape could be helpful. And I'm going to go ahead and mark my ruler, maybe or not. Okay, so I'm interested in this line here, okay? That line. I should put it on the back side. Is everybody still with us? <laughs> Tammy's laughing over there. Okay, so I just marked this. Okay, and 
what we want to do is that we want to make sure that this line here mm, we're sideways Frank I don't know if that it's okay, okay good all right so we want to make sure that this side here there's a month to trim and here it covers so what I'm going to do and I lined up the 45 degree right there okay and I'm actually going to rotate this and then what I do is I make sure that this line here and here okay do you see that so I have the edge and my point my 45 degree point gonna want new blades okay so I've done two sides now what we're going to do is that I'm going to square up my side here and then we're going to finish up on this edge here okay so we have our 5 eighths we have that diagonal and we have a beautiful two and five eighth inch square okay on all four sides here now you say Julie that didn't look particularly easy I said it was not hard it just was a little tedious now there are some tools out there that might make squaring up a half square triangle unit easier however to my knowledge they are not designed for the eighth inch increment so this particular ruler can help you with your eighth inch increments it is the rotary mate we sell it here at patchworks and tammy put a link out there um, there is the price online is a titch more expensive because acrylic is very expensive to ship and um, we do have it available in store as well okay so you cut four of these and piece them together and that turns into the inside piece here. I'm going to get out my, you can stay focused on that, Frank. Can you tell them about the tape you used? Sure, uh, the tape I used is the Glow Line by OmniGrid. There's several other little tapes out there. This is 519 for what we have in stock right now. I don't know if when we replenish it, if it will be the same price or a little bit higher. I know that, but it's about that price and it works really well and it comes off as well really easily if you have washi tape washi tape would work as well I really like the glow line tape because it's temporary it you can see through it which is also really nice and um, so it works really well okay so why don't we go back to our overhead camera here and I am going to share with you how to put this block together okay thank you so much Frank we'll work on our up close skills but I know that it's really hard to see some of the stuff from farther away so I really wanted to share with you how that goes together and hopefully that was helpful okay so here you can see how big this block is and you could see how much extra we had to trim down so you're making four of these for the center of the block and we're going to cut those down and piece them okay for the corners we have half square triangles and then <gasps> this is super scary we are cutting these little triangles and these are actually cut to size so we don't trim these down at all so these you want to be careful when you're cutting okay so you make your half square triangles you trim them down to size and then as you're putting these sides together the couple of tricks that I have for you is that after this is to size you position it so that you're piecing it with the flush edge here you're, this is how you're feeding it into the machine you want to feed it with this edge aligned here you don't want to put the pointy edge 
with the tail in first because your machine can eat the tail. So you're going to feed them in all this way. Tammy's laughing because she knows that, um, you know, sometimes the sewing machines get really hungry. Okay, so you make that, you are going to press it. You can trim off that little tail and then we're going to proceed to the other side. All four of these are constructed exactly the same way. Do that side. And then this is what the final unit looks like. So you construct this and then you sew side, 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 side. And then your block looks like this. When you are working with this, especially when you're working with these edges, so this is a bias edge that we've cut. So this is your straight edge, this is your bias edge. If you stretch it, it can do weird things and distort your block. So that's why I really like starching my fabric before I cut it. And then when I'm pressing, I press. I don't iron, okay? So my little instruction on pressing is that you use the least amount of exercise possible. Oftentimes, our favorite activity of quilting requires the least amount of exercise possible. So if you're exerting your arm and shoulder when you're doing your pressing, you are doing it wrong. You want to press your blocks. And when you press your blocks, they don't stretch, okay? So my recommendation is that you do not start with block number four. You start with block number one. Start with block number one. Make sure your initial blocks measure two and a half inches. If they do not, do not proceed. If it does, put them all together. If this measures six and a half inches, you can proceed. If it does not measure six and a half inches, you do not proceed, okay? Because with each of these different blocks that we have talked about this month, they get a little bit harder. Now, don't worry, they aren't all harder than this one, okay? A lot of them are still in this range, but uh, we just wanna make sure that since there are varying degrees of skill level through these different blocks, that you start with the simplest and let us know if you have any questions along the way. So who has questions? I'm sure there are a billion. I've been trying to answer them in questions Okay, so Tammy has been answering a lot of your questions along the way, which is awesome. Thank you so much, Tammy, for doing that. So I hear that you like that we, uh, how I search my fabric. That works really well. And um, they want to know about the slope behind the quilt that you have that you have Oh, so you want to know about the quilt behind me with the beautiful fabric. So this is uh, from one of my favorite quilts books, which is 12 Pack Quilts. We're going to be talking about it next week, which is a great reason why I wanted to tease you with it so that you make sure that you tune in next Thursday. But that book is from the 12 Pack Quilts book, which is done by me and my sister. And I'm on page eight, it takes 12 fat quarters. And it works really well with the Americana fabric that we've been showcasing tonight. So I thought it'd be a perfect backdrop. It is called Picnic in the, in the book. And it goes together really nice. And I love the alternating design here of how you have this little peekaboo block. And so the peekaboo block emerges based on your fabric selection. But I love it. Um, Kathy would like to know, is there ever a time to use frayed starch after the block is finished? So Kathy wanted to know, is there any time to use starch after the block is put together? So excellent question. So. One of the things that I recommend, and this leads us into a thing that pre-start your fabric so you can shrink it in, okay? You're shrinking it in. After you've made your block, press it. I actually um, have been thinking about this, and so 
when I'm piecing, I actually use a dry iron, okay? So I do not reactivate my starch. I do not add any more moisture. Then after your quilt top or a large segment of it is all together, sometimes you need to do that final starch, final press, make it sure everything is in submission. And at that point, I might use more starch. However, when I am working with these individual pieces, Oftentimes what I find is that if I add moisture at this point, what I can end up with is a little bit of craziness. Now, if you have craziness that happens from somewhere in the middle and you thought that everything was good to start with, you can resaturate it and kind of try, you know, saturate it and kind of block it. Um, technical term of trying to just recalibrate it into its squareness. But um, oftentimes, the best way to do that would be just to, if, you, if it's really off, you might want to remake the block if it bothers you. Okay, so bottom line, pre-starch, dry iron, starch at the end. Any other questions, Tammy? Um, no. Okay. Oh, well, thank you So that for the comment that I'm on page eight and you can keep me in your sewing room at all times with you and I can sew with you at three o'clock in the morning. It's very fun. Could even, so I'm getting silly. Okay, one question that I was thinking someone might ask but didn't ask is why didn't I use triangle paper for these particular blocks? And uh, triangle paper is something where those lines that we drew are printed on paper and then you stitch on top of paper and then cut it apart. The reason why I didn't if you, uh, is that these blocks are all scrappy blocks. And so since we are not having, we're not making a bunch of them with the same fabrics of all the same size to be using in a quilt, it would take more work than not to cut apart the triangle paper to then try to use it for a block or a square or two at a time. So asking a question that nobody asked. Okay. <laughs> Other things that might be helpful to you uh, as you are working with things. Uh, Frank, let's look overhead here. So the InvisiGrip is a wonderful cling that sticks to the back of your rulers so that they don't slide if you're having issues with ruler slide. Definitely invest in a uh, newer mat if you have grooves or such in your mat because that can cause you problems with your cutting. Having a sharp seam ripper is a really great because when you have to unsew you want to make sure to do it as efficiently and pain-free as possible. So this is just like pins and needles that they do wear out. And then my favorite quilting pins here are the Clover fine quilting pins. Item 2509 and uh, 100 come in this pack. They have glass heads, nice fine long pins work really really well. And when you are working with things you want to make sure that you have new rotary blades. So we thought what we would do is we would offer you a special tonight. <gasps> so this is a pre-order special. We've been trying to do that in our couple of our presentations and you seem to like it, so we'll try to keep it up. So we are offering our five pack in 45 and 60 degree or 60 millimeter blades packs. So regularly these are 65 19 65 12 and normally this is 39 40 49 30. Whew. 65 12 39 49 we are offering a pre-order so basically you can so you're not limited to the only two or whatever we have in store um, we are offering these packs for 44.99 wow that's an amazing deal so $44.99 and $24.99 for those five packs, okay? We're back. And this is, so if we missed you, that's okay. We can just be ahead. That's no problem. 
So we have these two different packs here. And this is available. Today is the 10th. And we will hold this offer open until the 17th. So we may not have them available in store for you uh, when you place your order, but we will honor the pricing until the 17th of March. So take advantage of this, stock up on blades because, well, it's a good thing and we haven't had a blade sale for a while. So, all right, that's super awesome. Our overhead is back, that's fabulous. Okay, so I wanted to show you, I just had a couple things here. Can you tell them the special again? Absolutely. So our, our pricing on here for the 45 is, and this is the most common size here, regularly priced 39.49, sale price through the 17th, when you mention this offer, 24.99. And the 60 millimeter, regularly 65.12. Mention this offer, 44.99. Okay. So offer good through the 17th. All right. Now, there have been a couple of you who have been working on your blocks, and I just wanted to share with you, you always want to make sure to share in our Patchworks party all of your show and tell. And if you want some inspiration to hop on in, I will gladly approve you to the group. We just want to make sure that we don't have any robots or anything in there. So that's why you have to ask for approval. So here we have a beautiful quilt block from Helen Hockey. This is awesome. She's using Joe Morton which is super pretty. And then we have Kayla, and she has gone ahead and she says, I've been working ahead. So she made block one, block two, and block three, and she's using some Robin Pickens, which is super pretty. And we were picking out her fabrics for that, and I can't wait to see it as we are going together. She also has the great Kate flannel a design wall grid behind her works really well for designing your quilt and that gray background just works really really well and I think here that Kayla's just been sticking them up on the wall she doesn't even have to pin them so it works really well and thank you Kayla for sharing your blocks on the design wall so that everyone could see how awesome that design wall can be I did want to share with you uh, one of the new fabric lines that we've gotten in. We've still been getting in a ton of great new fabric. We have a new fabric line called Summer Zest. It's a batik and is super pretty. And Frank, can we look overhead? So this is just this sumptuous fabric line. Just It makes me thirsty. There's 25 fabrics that we have in this collection. We have towers in fat quarters and half yards. We also have 20 strip, two and a half inch strip sets available that have been cut and packaged by the wonderful team that we have here. If you had wanted to have a whole strip set of 40 strips, you can just scoop up two packs. But if you wanted to be working with a smaller project, you can go ahead and just grab one. So this blue and orange is just so tropical and summery. Makes me want to just bite into an orange. Last week we got in some blue and purple batik, is that right, Tammy? I'm sorry? Some, last week we got blue and purple batik in, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, so we need to make up a tower of that because that's really pretty too. So, really gorgeous. It must be batik season for things to be landing because we got our Robert Kaufman Artisan Batiks and last week we got some gorgeous Hoffmans in. So they're so pretty. And Tammy shared a link for you, and we have that available in-store and online. And 
it is online right now, so that's awesome. Yay, so Tammy won't yell at me today. So, do we have any questions from anything that I've shared with you today? I really would like to thank you as we've been uh, navigating through uh, being able to show you up close camera. Maybe we'll work on that a little bit to be able to show you up close, but I know that uh, it can be really nice to be able to see things rather than just from up above. So hopefully that was beneficial today. We also have a really great uh, selection of the red, white, and blue fabrics including the new ports that are going to be arriving in the next couple days, um, which is exciting. We have the pre-cuts available right now, and then the yardage will be in store. Um, I know that we've gotten the, the shipping notification for that already. Next week, we will be fe uh, featuring our Moda University, and that will appear at Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Tammy, do we have any other questions? No. All right. Well, I would like to thank you so much for joining us tonight. I wish you happy quilting, and we'll see you soon.